Well, hello there everybody, subscribers and viewers who are wandering by my YouTube channel. This is UXW Bill once again with an interesting, well hopefully interesting, computer video for you all to watch. I think it's fair to say that a lot of people would probably be in agreement about one thing. And that one thing is that Windows Vista really never was the performer it ought to be. I've seen some systems that would run Vista very, very well, but the majority of systems, even some very competent systems, just couldn't manage to do it. And one of Vista's favorite tricks is to sit there and churn the disk. Well, anybody who follows the computer trade relatively closely knows that Microsoft has had some public betas of the next version of Windows, Windows 7, out. There's even a release candidate that you can download, or at least you could download. Anyway, Microsoft says that the um, minimum system requirements for Windows 7 are a 1 gigahertz processor, a gigabyte of memory, and I forget how much hard drive space. But what we have here is a machine that would meet the processor requirement. This is a Compact Desk Pro EN small form factor system. A very cute, nice little pizza box style of system that you can stick almost anywhere to do almost any kind of job. Well, the job that I picked for this one to do was to run Windows 7. Now these systems based upon the Intel 815 chipset, which means they have a limit of 512 megabytes of RAM. So we don't meet Windows 7's minimum RAM requirement. Still, the installer didn't seem to care. So tonight, for your viewing pleasure, I'm going to present how to be very mean to Windows 7 and to see if it still performs adequately even on some less than optimal hardware. So all I have to do here is flip the KVM switch and turn this computer on and we'll see how long it takes Windows 7 to reach the boot up screen. So start your clocks now. startup time wasn't too bad at all. So let's see how long it takes us to get to a usable desktop. And here I am at the sign-in screen. I'm going to log in right now. Let's see how long it takes the desktop to come up. There's the welcome message. And there's the desktop. With some stuff out there. Our disk is still churning a little bit. Things are getting ready down there in the system tray. Still thinking about it. Our drive is still churning a little bit over here. Nothing too serious. Alright, first thing let's do, let's try going into uh, Firefox. See how long it takes that to come up and get, get to be usable. Doesn't take very long at all. We can pick from one of the, uh, the latest news headlines here. Let's see, what's in the, uh, what's in the news today? Let's just, um, let's just randomly pick something here. Loading up a page from the BBC here. It's as good as anything. Teens still fear knife crime. Yeah, that, that came up pretty well. That's uh, pretty usable, I'd say. And, you know, if we were to happen to, say, go to the best, the best YouTube channel in the world here. Punch that up. 
Now this thing stumbles a bit when you try to um, when you try to watch YouTube videos. It doesn't do too well at that. I just don't think it's got enough processor power to do it, although it could do it under Windows XP. Um, and it may be that the drivers for Windows 7 aren't quite optimized yet. But as you can see, this, this is an entirely tol tolerable existence, at least as far as Firefox goes. And close that out. I can go in here to Open Office and fire that up. That came up pretty well. I remember we're running on a Pentium 3 clocked at 1 gigahertz with 512 megabytes of memory. And I just told OpenOffice to make me a text document. And we can do some typing here. And the response is pretty good. You get your dialogues up quickly. And built-in Windows features tend to work pretty well. Here's Windows Paint coming up right now. It looks a lot different. It's got that uh, ribbon UI that Microsoft seems to love so much. This machine does get a little bit draggy when you've got several tasks open at one time, mainly because you hit the 512 megabyte memory ceiling of this machine pretty quickly. But as you can see, the control panel came up nice and quickly. Let's see what we can do inside there. We could bring up about the programs and features control panel. That sounds as good as anything. List of installed software. I tried playing DVDs on here and just like with the YouTube videos it didn't work too well. But again that might be pre-release bugs or it might be that the machine just doesn't have enough horsepower when it's running under Windows 7 to do those kinds of things. And there's my favorite tool of the day, speed fan can actually see what the temperatures inside the machine are. Stuff like that. It's pretty cool down here in the basement right now. Something else we can do while we're in there is we can check the uh, we can check the system properties and see what the Windows user experience rating is. Let's see what they tell us. We rate a 1.0 on the Windows Experience Index. And if we go in there, we can see that our processor scores a 1.4, memory scores a 1.6, graphics and gaming graphics both score a 1.0, but what do you expect out of Intel 815 graphics? And then our primary hard drive, now this is just a 40 gigabyte Western Digital Drive that's got some mapped out bad spots on it. But it scored a rather impressive 5.4, which is not bad for an ATA100 hard drive. It's not bad at all. Of course, when it's time to um, when it's time to shut down Windows 7, Windows 7 shuts down pretty quickly. You can see the response is pretty good there too. And if we click on shut down, it won't take too long, and Windows 7 will clear the desktop and put everything away and then it will eventually turn off the computer a very short while later. Two desk pros stacked on top of one another. Still shutting down over there. But that's pretty much the uh, that's pretty much the Windows 7 story. And so far, although I still don't like the user interface, there went the power and shut off now. Although I still don't like the user interface, um, Windows 7 clearly has a performance lead over Vista. It's it's just tremendous that it runs this well on a machine that doesn't even really meet the minimum requirements in at least one major category is pretty darn impressive. So if you're planning on upgrading to Windows 7, I think at this point it could be said that it will be a positive experience for you.